Oh, hey. So I started the video a little bit early today to see if I could actually get live producer on Facebook to work. And strangely, today it decided to work. So I'm here a little bit early. I don't know if anyone's going to see me for a while, but I'm just going to, um, I suppose, go through a few things later. I did not expect this to work, and usually it's been taking me a good 10, 20 minutes to even get the video started. This is new. I'm glad it's working. I'm also very aware that I am alone on this screen. But hey, it's working for once. Um, so hi for anyone watching this later. And I'm probably going to... Huh, let's see. It's 20 minutes early. Yay. 15, something like that. Um, so yeah, I have been working on my artist statements for my practice portfolio unit and still f puzzling through what I want to say for those because I have to have those done so that I can have my website put together so that I can get all of my social media stuff put together. It, it's just, it's like those sliding puzzles. You move one thing around to a different spot and then you move that thing so that you can get three other things moved so that the one thing can finally go down in the corner. That's how life works for me right now. And I'm just going through trying to see how this is working and if it will tell me anything new, because I've not actually got it to work with this interface before. Um, and So, I'm not sure if anyone is actually going to join me this early on since I did say that the video was going to start at 4, but I'm afraid if I end this early, something weird will happen. Forgive me, um, this video is going to begin with me wondering at things for a little bit. Let's see. I suppose I'm just going to get started. I'm going to start with some of my pieces from first year just because I know it's going to be a while before people start coming in and showing up. And I have some things that I need to just unwrap, take a photo of, wrap back up, put into this box here. have to get my camera battery down. Um, so just let me get started with that. Not used to this working. Eventually, I will have this live stream thing figured out, and it will be very interesting, and I'll have people who actually are interested in seeing things, but for now, it's just going to be me babbling at a camera for a few minutes while I try to get things worked. All right, let's see. Um, I did water my plants today, so they are happy. Um, they have a nice window to sit in the sun with, so that is good, but I, because I have had boxes of glass in front of them the last week or so. I had not watered them yet and they were not happy. Um, but one moment. Camera battery. So this new interface has a function where I can put poles together. So I'm on down. I may put one up relatively soon, so or after I start seeing people possibly watching me, so that I can see if well, what people think of all of this and whether Facebook is even a good platform for me to be doing this on. I think it is. Um, I think it's going to work for now. Um, if I do keep doing this, I may switch to a different platform. But live is behaving for me today and entirely unexpected that it would behave for me today. 
It's currently 3.46 UK time. I have a camera that has, let's see, a partially charged battery. Yay! I'm not looking forward to the day I have, I finally start going through, you know, editing all these photos so I can use them for things. Move the box. Birds here out of the way. And get this box out. So I had been keeping a good portion of my pieces from my first major project in the second half of my first year here in two suitcases like this. But now that I have a nice big box, I'm putting everything in the big boxes so that they take up less space. And then this is going to be used for keeping some of my patchwork things together. Mwah ha ha ha. Okay, sorry about that. It seems that a uh, live producer and I are still not friends. Anyway, uh, fix the stream. I think it's going to work now. I had checked a box that I should not have checked, and hopefully my internet connection will actually work and this wall goes swimmingly. So again, hello to anybody who joins this or watches this later. I'm only 10 minutes early now because technical difficulties today. Gonna roll with it. Um, I'm Katie Silverwings. I am a glass blower and textile artist, and I this is my kitchen. I have set up my table with a piece of fabric so I can take photos of all of the things that I've made. Um, I've been doing this for roughly this entire week so far, taking pictures of things and either packing them into boxes or just generally setting them around my kitchen so that I can potentially take pictures of them later with some of my patchwork. And I'm enjoying so far when it's working, sharing what I'm up to with y'all and live streaming. I don't know if anyone actually is watching today, but if you are, or if you watch this later, thank you. I hope this is entertaining and gives you something interesting or at the very least distracting to have as part of your day. So anyway, I showed this in the tiny little video that I posted earlier. Um, or that I recorded earlier because at the time the stream was working and then it didn't and then now I'm starting over. Anyway, this is one of the 21 little vessels like this that I made during my first year project um, with duplication, mold blowing, and color application. And I'm just going to take a couple photos of this and then I will come back to talking to people and hopefully by then somebody will have joined me so I can have some conversation going today because that's always nice. To move my chair now. So unlike some of the things I've been photographing, this one needs to be wrapped up and put in this box with all of its friends. So give me a moment to do that. I'm sit back down and do that. Um, if anyone happens to be watching, I don't know if the version of the, service, the streaming service that I'm using now for Facebook is going to tell me when people appear. Um, but do say hi if you're here. Um, welcome. And one last look at this pretty thing. 
I do love how the facets came out in these, especially with the ones where they're slightly thicker. They kind of reflect the light better. And since that refraction reflection type thing is something I'm using in my current work, I think it's nice to see it's been there all along. So piece of newspaper, a little bit of tape. Where is the end of the tape? Oh, one moment. Sorry, um, my mother was trying to call me because I tried to call her earlier and now she's calling me and she knows that I'm doing this. Anyway, bit of tape to just secure this and then it goes into the box with all of its frames. I did have 21 of these things at one point in time, so I'm gonna continue with unwrapping those and then hopefully I will get to some of my newer work. This is yet another one of those group of pieces. So I found this is another one of the lovely little faceted pieces. Um, this one has brown frit put, where's the camera? There's the camera. Brown frit put on the top of it. Um, it was not melted in very much after I put the frit on. So it's got a very nubbly texture, I guess is the best way of putting it. It really kind of feels like sandpaper almost, but in a good way. Um, it's got a lot of little sparkles all over it. And it again has that mold blown faceted shape. Um, I have the mold for these somewhere around here. If anybody who's watching would like to see that mold, I do have it somewhere in my kitchen and I can find it. Um, so yeah, there's that one. Just gonna take a couple pictures and then wrap it up and get the next one out. Once it does hit four o'clock, I will probably say hello again, just for anybody who happens to be watching then who did not watch when I first started doing this. slide my chair back up and just make sure everything is still working here. Sounds like people are talking on a different version of my computer. If you hear pings in the background, uh, that's just my classmates talking to each other. So, this piece of newspaper. I'm not going to do this on top of the piece of fabric because ink transfers onto fabric, but it doesn't transfer onto glass, luckily. There's another nicely, neatly wrapped little package to go into the big box. My big boxes are quite full. Let's see, almost four o'clock. Next, tomorrow I will not be early. I think I figured this stuff out. Really, I do. Also, yes, I am from Texas. I have fancy, I have Texas mugs. 
makes me happy. And yes, we have the best anti-littering slogan ever because, you know, Texas, we take littering seriously and it somehow becomes one of our models that everyone takes entirely the wrong way. Yeah. <clears throat> Give me a moment to mute my little phone sounds because my phone is making sounds and I don't want to pay attention to it right now. Okay, so where was I? Ah, yes. Is it? It's four o'clock now. Okay, so this is the time when I said I was going to be broadcasting and hopefully now some people might decide that they want to watch. So if you do, then great. Hi, welcome. I'm Katie Silverwings and I am unpacking more glass. Um, but if nobody's watching right now, that's fine. I kind of am doing this for me as much as for showing anybody because I do enjoy talking to thin air and to the people without bones, um, meaning the imaginary people that I think might be on the other side watching at some point. So hello, all you lovely, potentially imaginary people. And I hope you like the shiny things that I am unwrapping. So without further ado, another package. Oh, looks like people are liking a post that I shared. I don't know which post it is, but perhaps some of you are here. I will wave. I will wave in frame. The camera thing is something I'm going to have to get used to. Anyway, this is another one of my pieces from first year. It's another mold-blown faceted vase. And this one is has green on the top. It has that nice nubbly frit texture on it as well. Frit is what we glass blowers call crushed colored glass or just crushed glass in general. And you, with this one, you can kind of see where I was going with this project. Um, my inspiration was camouflage, duplication, things animals do to hide themselves. And I settled on this idea of glass frogs because glass frogs, they have the best name. They're lovely little froggies that live in the rainforest and their bellies are transparent and their backs are pale green. So you end up with these lovely little frogs that if you hold them up to a light on a piece of plexiglass or something so you can see their bellies. You can actually see their organs and see through them. And I just thought, I just love the things. They come in all these different spotty textures. And so I made this group of 21 kind of test pieces really with the facets inspired by those. And someday I'd like to pick the project up and make full size pieces about or inspired by glass frogs because they're just awesome. People who know me, you probably know I like amphibians. They're cool. Anyway, I'm going to take a couple pictures of this. Let you see the nice texture on it again. Yeah. Everything is in reverse in the camera. It takes forever to get used to. There we go. So I'm just going to take a couple pictures of this one. Um, do leave me a comment if you're watching so that I know you're there. But if you're not, that's okay too. Those of you who are watching this that follow me on Instagram, if you were following me a couple of years ago, uh, you will probably have seen pictures of these before because these are some of the first pieces I reliably managed to upload photos of. And you will probably see photos of them again because I just love them. They're so fun. Um, again, anyone who's watching, if you have questions about what I do, glass blowing, life, frogs, I will do my best to answer anything people ask me, within reason. Don't ask me too much about solving the world's problems because I can solve small problems. Or I can at least distract you from them depending on what the need is. So, the chair is a good improvement on this system. So I'm going to wrap this lovely little frog vase, show that to you again. I love the reflections in these. I'm going to wrap this up in some paper. All nice and wrapped up and safe. I would leave all of these out on shelves where I could admire them because I love having glass everywhere in my house. But unfortunately, I have a relatively small flat and I don't have many shelves. And the ones that I do have are full of books. 
So everything has to go into storage. And another one of the first year frog based vessels. Ah, this is one of my favorite ones. So this one has some yellow powder on it and then has these big chunky bits of lime of entering frit. Um, you may be able to see it. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can move so that the light hits it better. Ah, oh, that's the problem. One of my lights up directly above my workspace has gone out. I will have to fix that. Um, but there are very subtle little sparkles. Uh, you can't see them so well in this lighting, but if you happen to catch a little bit of glitter looking stuff on the green bits, that is the frit. And Lime of Entering is one of my favorite frits to work with just because it, it's sparkly and it's fun and it makes me really happy. And as you can see, this does, this is a thicker version of it. This was one of the first or one of the earlier ones I did. They got progressively better as I was making them and getting used to the process and just blowing glass in general, because at that point in time, I'd only been working with hot glass for about, well, this was first half of second year, actually. Any, either way, I'd only been working with hot glass for about six months to a year at that point. So I'm very proud of these. Let's see if I can. There we go. Turn the brightness up on my computer a bit, and maybe now you can see some sparkles. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, I'm going to take a couple pictures of this. Let's see if I can fix this light real quick. Okay, and ow. So you have to... I think I need to sweep my workspace. I'm just gonna tilt this up for a bit. I need to go wash my hand real quick. I will be right back. I'm back. Um, in case anyone's wondering, pro tip, if you're shooting pictures of glass and you're kneeling in a kitchen floor, make sure you don't have any bits of broken glass in the floor or glass crumbs or things because then one has to leave the live stream to go get a band-aid. I'm fine. Don't worry. Mom, if you're watching this, I am fine. I cleaned it. I put a band-aid on. Just a tiny little cut, but you know, it's on my knee, so all that. Anyway, uh, just going to sweep the floor and then I'll get back to taking photos. Now here's the question, 
Is anyone going to have seen that? I don't know, but I'm okay if you have. And if you haven't, that's fine too. It's a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. Now, where did my broom go? Ah! My floor is now clean and safe for me to kneel in to take pictures of glass. Luckily, I had already finished taking pictures of this, so I can now wrap it up. And again, I don't know if anyone's watching. It doesn't really tell me if anyone is here, or at least it hasn't right now. So... If you are watching, say hello so I know who it is so I can talk directly to you because you will be the special person that I am specifically talking to right now. But if not, I'm just going to keep unwrapping glass and hope that somebody finds this interesting eventually. Or if not, that I at least find this interesting because it's better talking to an imaginary audience than it is talking to myself. Of doing this live is that I have no idea if thing interesting things are going to happen or not, but I don't have to worry about being forced or editing things or really doing any of the lovely stuff that my friends who are in film production would probably cringe to see this because I'm not doing, but this is more for me than for anything else. So another one of my lovely little frog inspired vessels from first year. I know because that's the only thing that's in the box that I'm taking things out of right now. I do have one more box of recent pieces, but since I started the stream early, I started with this box, so that box will be next. Anyway, ah, this is one of my personal favorites. Again, actually, I think all of these are my favorite, which means I just love all of them rather than there being a favorite. So this has a brown, lustery-ish powder on the surface of the rim, and then has, again, that lovely faceted bottom. I do love the way light plays in glass. I think that's part of why I ended up choosing glass as my specialism when I was asked to choose a specialism was because it's just so unique as a material as to what you can do with it. And it has qualities that you just can't get from anything else. Like, or at least not and have the same sort of result. Anyway, I'll take a couple pictures of this. First, I'm going to check something here. Hmm. I'm going to try something out after I take a picture of this. But first, sweeping the floor again. That is part of the ritual now. I must sweep the floor before I kneel down so that I don't end up uh, injuring myself on any tiny slivers of glass that may have escaped my wrappings. Um, part of why I'm going through all of my glass like this is so that I can then, ow, uh, finish cleaning my kitchen. And I can't really get my floor cleaned and swept up until I get all of the glass put away so that there's no more glass bits going anywhere. Uh, see, reasons why, those of you who know me, uh, or who have ever been in my house know there's carpet upstairs and therefore shoes live by the door in part because... I track glass into my house all the time. I don't want anyone else tracking nasty stuff as well. I have to say, Facebook, I liked the other interface better. All 
All right, so now to wrap this one back up so that it can get in the box. I have to say, yes, I know one piece of newspaper is not really enough to protect something like this if I were transporting it a, lot, a long way or anything like that, but these are literally just going to sit in my kitchen for a couple of months now or until I'm ready to really pack them neatly into boxes to get shipped back to the States or to potentially get shipped to new homes someday, hopefully. So for now, they're just neat enough that they don't knock into each other. So now that I put that one away, I'm going to try a feature now that I'm in the version of the thing live producer that actually lets me do this. And I'm going to just try putting up a poll here. And it's like, um, I think I'm going to ask a question and the question is going to be, do you enjoy watching this? Or actually, I'm saying, do you enjoy watching me talk over my work like this? And answers are going to, be, options are going to be yes and no. And then I'm going to add a meh. I'm going to publish this poll and let's see if it works. Um, this is also just me trying out the software. So if you're here and you do enjoy watching this or not, or don't have an opinion, if you could click on something on the poll that I'm putting up so that I can then, um, you know, see if anyone's watching and what people think of this. Cause I am going to keep doing this as long as I'm stuck in my house, just because it entertains me to do it. But I would like to do this in a way that is actually entertaining for y'all as well. So I'm going to keep unwrapping glass. I really don't know if anyone can even see me now. Oh well. Ah, here we go. I've been looking for this one. This is one of my early tests doing that. It's just been cracked off and not really had anything done to it whatsoever. Just a test to see if the mold would work. It's clear, it's chunky, makes me happy. try this out on my patchwork now that I've found a clear one that's thick enough that it might do something. Let's try this out. Sweep the floor a little bit. I'm pretty convinced that no one can see me. Interesting distortion with this one. I 
think I may have to end this since I'm just full of tactical difficulties today. I think I may end this stream, see if I can put it in the other version where I can at least see if people are seeing me. Because it, yeah. And need to wrap him up first. So I'm going to just set my camera aside for a second and see if I can make sure that this is all working. Sorry, me staring at the computer is probably very unmentioned. I'm just trying to make sure that everything's working with this. All right, so I think people are actually seeing this. Yay, even if I'm not seeing any comments or stuff. That's good. All right, where was I? Oh, yeah, unpacking glass. Yay! Set that aside. Over here. And it's another little faceted thing with interesting colors on the rim, I'm pretty sure, because that's what's all in the box here. And yes, that is what it is. This one is just those chunky bits of Lime Aventurine for it. Again, I wish the camera could show y'all just how much this sparkles. Maybe just a little bit. It might look a little bit grainy, but I promise you those grains are, in fact, those grain that graininess to the different bits is actually sparkling. Hmm. Anyway, so this one has a bit of a warped top, because, again, I was still a baby glass blower learning how to do things when I was making these, and I was not that good at getting things to come out uniform and very pretty. Anyway, take a few pictures. Yeah. chair back forward and wrap this up. So again, if anyone has questions for me, uh, put them over in the comments because that is the only way I can really interact with anyone who is watching this is to see comments from you. But as it is, Another nicely wrapped little package. And into the box next, like with all of these, for one he goes. And another one. And it's another one of my early clear tests. This one came out slightly better. Again, this was when I was first making the molds. So for this project, I made six separate plaster molds. 
Um, I only kept the key block and the original form for it, but so I made the series of molds so that they could all be ready to go one after the other. So it would be faster for me making them um, for making the glass pieces, because the way it works with plaster molds, you have to soak them between pieces so that they don't disintegrate as quickly and so they don't stick to the glass. Uh, we also coat them in uh, graphite. So your hands are like you've been playing with pencil all day. But this one is just a very thick version of the form. Doesn't have as much definition in the facets, but it still has some nice optic effects with it. So yeah. And since it's clear, it gets a photo on my piece of patchwork. Just so I can see how this distorts the pattern to take one from a lower angle. Which means I have to move this. Not as interesting as some of the round things, but still cool. Assuming I finish uh, doing all of my glass sorting and photographing today, uh, tomorrow's live stream is actually going to have me playing with some fabric, which will be a nice change, because um, I'm almost done working out the sort of design that I want for my big patchwork panels that'll go into my final body of work installation. So those will be um, something I start working on tomorrow, and I'll set up my computer so that y'all can potentially observe me doing patchwork and things. And again, I'll be available for questions or comments or talking to people if you want me to actually talk about something specific and not just talk to the air. And another one. So it's kind of like the birds from yesterday, except I'm expecting it this time. So this one, um, some of my classmates and friends have a love-hate relationship with this particular piece because the top of it looks like the butt of a sea cucumber. See? Very nubbly texture, but also very weird shape at the top, and it actually is fully closed off on the inside because I opened it, I could not get it open correctly, and it just kind of sealed itself. They got, this was one of the first ones I made. It's not nearly as good as some of my later ones, but it's still a cool little object. And it has a really nice texture. I think that's the thing I like best about putting fruit on at the end of pieces is that you do potentially get this really nice want to hold it in your hands and touch it kind of glass. And since glass is usually considered fragile and things one sits on, in some cases, things one sets on a shelf, um, glass that you want to pick up and hold and turn over in your hands is quite interesting. At least I think so. And no, this is not an April Fool's thing. This is really what I'm doing today. So, ha, more light, excellent. 
wondering where that light was. Much better. Goodness, this box is almost full. You can actually see the newspaper there now. It's a big box too. Ah, much better with the light. You can actually see me and the glass. I have six more of these and then I'm gonna get into stuff that I actually made this year. Exciting. So this one has a tiny bit of yellow powder and then the little wrinkly looking bit flower petally bits are bits of what we call eggshell which is just very thin bits of broken colored glass um so you can see that this one's really subtle but and the facets turned out very nice on this one i think as you can see it really looks nice in the light i do like these faceted forms um, I think that's the only reason I would go back to mold blowing things again is if I was doing things specifically to have the facets in them like this blown in as opposed to ground in because grinding in facets takes forever to get it right. Anyway. So it'd really be easier if I had a chair with wheels. All right, so before I open this, I'm going to try a different feature that's part of this version of live. Um, but again, I'm still deciding whether I like this or whether I'm going to go to streaming on something like YouTube or something else that's easier to potentially to work with and that might be easier for y'all to actually interact with me a little bit more if anyone is wanting to watch. So there's a thing on here that says questions and it says add a question. Um, so what would I like to know? Here's one. So I'm asking, what do you want me to talk about? And we're going to see how that works. I don't entirely know how this works because I don't really watch live streams all that much myself. I'm usually, unless it's the Corny Museum of Glasses YouTube live streams of their demonstrations, I tend to be working on things too much and I just have music on while I'm 
working on stuff. So I'm not really ever watching stuff. I'll have things on in the background that I'm listening to. But in any case, I'll leave that open and see what happens. Exciting, wonderful things. Anyway, unwrapping a piece of glass. Yay! So there it is. I'm going to unwrap this. Ah. This is one of the nicer ones. So this, it looks very glass froggy. So it's got these colored spots on the top. There's green, a mixture of green spots. And then there's a layer of brown spots put on on top of those. And then it has all the nice, let's see, has all the nice facets in it. Catches the light really nicely, especially now that I've got the light above my table working again. If you hear kind of a buzzing sound in the background, that's that light because I need to do something with it. I think I need to move it a little bit more so that it'll connect right. Um, anyway, going to take some photos of this. Getting my camera settings right is always a pain. But it's worth it. And I'm get and with these older pieces, especially the photos are more so that I know what's in the box. Because I had a few pieces from this group that are in a box of broken glass because they were cracked or messed up some or they were cracked too badly for me to be able to keep. So they're in a different box, then eventually somebody will melt those down and use them, or they might just get gotten rid of, I'm not entirely sure. It would help if I knew how any of the stuff that this computer stuff worked. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. Getting close to the end of these, I promise. I only have a couple more that I, I already had about half of them wrapped up and put it in this box, so you're not going to get to see those right now. Probably grateful for that, aren't you? Hmm. But. This is another green one. Has a spring green on the rim. Again, not my best job of opening it or of blowing it because it's very thick, but it's thick in a good way. I like the bottom of this. I like how it took the impression of the mold. I just wish it were a little bit taller. But next time I'm making stuff in this line, I will do that. So more of the shiny thing. Now I'm going to take some pictures. Right. 
this one up. Show it to you one more time. Just a nice shiny thing. Because that's what I do. I'm Katie Silverwings. I make shiny things. Because, you know, the world needs more shiny things. And the shiny, the word shiny in my um, lexicon doesn't just mean reflects light and is pretty to look at. It's also just things that spark, what's the phrase, spark joy, make you happy, are generally nice and pleasant. As an artist, I am not the sort of artist who makes stuff really to shock people or to make them angry or anything big and meaty like that. I I make stuff that's about positivity. I make stuff that's about um, animals sometimes. But um, I, make, I make things that are there to make you feel better about yourself and the world and the people in, in it. Because heaven knows we need more good things in the world, especially insert global situation here. You know. All right, so two more after this one, I promise. And then we'll get into some of the stuff that I made this year or possibly at the end of last year, but still counts. I hope you like the sound of newspaper. Watching me like this, you're gonna hear a lot of it. Okay, so this one, it kind of squashed a bit because the color I applied on the rim is little bits of cane. Um, so cane is kind of the thin rods of glass that we use for making some designs. In this case, these were little bits of cane left over from other things that were going on in the studio at the time. I just kind of left them sitting on the marber and just as after this was taken out of the mold and transferred, just kind of pressed the hot glass onto them to pick them up. It's got a nice couple of lines here. I would like to play more with this sort of messy cane bits on a bubble thing, but again, that will have to wait until I have access to a studio again. Someday I shall be in a hot shop again, and on that day there will be much rejoicing from all of the glass blowers because it will mean that we are all actually able to leave our houses and go make glass again. Oh, there's the table. Don't need to do that. There's glass sitting on the table. Off camera, right there. I have to move my chair a bit. See, I know people usually associate live streaming with um, video games, mostly, in my experience. That's what most people do with live streams is video games, or it'll be somebody who's really important and well-established, and their live stream is a special event. And then there's me, and I just don't want to make individual videos or really do much of that. I just want to talk to people, so I don't mind doing it as a live thing. And I just want to talk to you, hang out, show you some shiny things, generally just not feel as alone. Not that I feel too alone right now, because I know I have neighbors next door who seem to be quite lovely. Their choice in music is also nice. I hear it on occasion through the walls, but that's just modern life, I think. Anyway, one last look at the shiny thing with the cane lines. I really like how the cane went on this one, especially this little blue line that looks like a smile. See? Smiling.
I do wish it would tell me if people are watching or not, because it did that in the other version of this. And I really liked getting to say hello to specific people as they showed up. But I don't know if anyone's actually watching or not. So every now and then it's giving me this message of Facebook has not received video signal, which I know that the video signal is here, that it's recording because I can see myself, but I don't know how good my internet connection is, whether it's really working or not. So if anyone wants to leave me a comment and say, hey, uh, yes, this is working, I would appreciate that. I'm gonna refresh a different page on here to see what's going on. Ah, here's the problem. Okay, I'm going to switch over here and share. This one, which is showing that I'm live now, I'm just going to share that. I don't really use Facebook all that much uh, myself. I tend to have only it's just Messenger or stuff like this that I'm doing. So I'm never really sure how the feed and things work. I kind of stopped paying attention to that after the fourth or fifth time they changed the layouts. And then suddenly I wasn't really interacting with my friends so much as just everyone was broadcasting stuff to each other rather than really interacting with each other's stuff, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I've been on this platform way too long. To the point where I barely use it, but not trying to be elitist or anything. It's just somehow somewhere in between the th the fourth and fifth different layout change, I lost interest in social media in general and have never quite gotten back to really being active on things. I'm active on Instagram sometimes. I'm starting to be active live streaming things, but general normal how Facebook is supposed to be used kind of baffles me and Twitter drives me crazy. So I just avoid it like the metaphorical plague. You know, here there be monsters and also trolls and not necessarily the nice kind. But right here in my kitchen, there is glass and I have more to unpack. So next to last one of these, and it's another brown one. I do like brown glass. Um, this one does have a little bit of that bird shape to it. Very thick, has some nice definition in the facets, has a little bit of vermiculite stuck to the bottom because it was too hot for me melting it in when I turned it over. It has a very small hole, but still. Not that bad. I like this one. Yes, I know. I like all of them, but they're special to me. Because each one of these represents a tiny moment in my journey as a glassblower where I was learning something and getting better. Check something here. Oh, hey, there we go. That's strange. I can actually look at myself. I'm going to navigate away from that so that I don't eat up my bandwidth. Um, but in any case, I do enjoy hanging out with y'all and generally just talking to the air to make sure it's fine okay so anyway one last look at this little darling and then i'm going to wrap it back up in a piece of newspaper
last one for this box. I'm so excited. Yay! Um, so this one is one of the most successful ones from this line of pieces. And again, it has that frog spot frit mix on the top. So this is a mixture of different greens in different sizes. Oh, there, there it is. I have to make sure I can show you this rather than just having to see my face. So no. camera's fussy a little bit. And it does have nice facets. They're a little bit rounded in this one. It didn't take the shape as nicely as it could have. But I do like it. So there's that one. I'm just gonna set that down, take a couple pictures, and then get on to take to pulling out the stuff that I've actually made recently. Okay, here I am again. And I don't know if it's going to work this time or not. Today seems to be the day for my interconnect connection and various things to not cooperate. I don't know if my last hour or so of live streaming actually worked or not. Um, so if it did, then great. And if it didn't, then well, I'm gonna be here for a while yet, so if anyone is interested in saying hello to me, um, here I am, and I hope that this is still to you. Uh, just give me a second to get this where people can find it. Okay, so let me move the camera. Oh, you can see the rest of my window in my refrigerator now. Refrigerator's on that side. Yes, it is. I'm still getting used to the fact that the camera flips my left and my right so they're not in sync because I'm looking at cameras is something I'm relatively new to. Anyway, I'm going to go back to unpacking glass. And if anyone happens to drop by, then hello. Uh, if this is the first of the live stream videos I'm working on today that you're seeing, hi as well. Uh, Katie Silverwings here. Glass blower, general artist, work with textiles some. Today I'm unpacking glass. Normally I would have, or usually I would want to have a better introduction than that, but I would also have wanted to start and have everything working at the start. And today is just not the day for my internet connection to cooperate with Facebook. I do think I'm going to end up switching platforms as soon as I figure out a better platform to switch to for doing live stuff because I much prefer doing live stuff than recording a video and then having to edit it and then having to upload it and all that stuff because I don't have time for that and I don't really have the skill base for that. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, let's see, the screen so you can see things. Um, this is the last of my faceted pieces that I made back as the beginning of my second year um, st of study here during my first year of actually blowing glass as opposed to just playing with stuff in my Nana's garage or doing the sand casting we did the first part of my first year. So it has lots of nice little bits of frit partially melted in so it still has a lot of texture on the rim and then has lots of nice facets on the bottom. So there's that. Just gonna take a couple more pictures.
Again, the pictures I'm taking are more for me documenting things because I know eventually I will want to take my best pieces up to the digitization unit on campus or some to a professional to help me photograph them for website, postcards, display type things. But right now I don't have access to any of the equipment or studios I would normally use, so I have a piece of white fabric and a camera. And it's a nice camera even though it's almost 10 years old now. Yeah. So like the rest of his friends, this one's going to get wrapped up in its nice little jacket of newspaper and put in a box because it's going to be stored for now because I don't have enough space in my house to have everything out where I can see it all the time, which is sad because I like how sparkly these are. Okay, I see there's been at least a like on this video, and people are watching. Hi, people! I don't know who you are, but hi! I hope you're having a nice day. I'm going to put this into the box with its friends, and then I'm going. you're just in time for me to start taking out my pieces from this year, which are in a different box that I will have to move over, but here it is. So there's that. And now for more things. So here I have a newspaper wrap, newspaper, newspaper, a paper wrapped a uh, piece of glass. This is one of my more recent pieces. I can tell because of how heavy it is. And I'm going to take the newspaper off of it and see what's inside. Ah. It's another, this one is blue. It's a color test piece. And you can see this is from when I was thinking, oh, more round bodied shapes. And I still do like these shapes, but they're not what I've been making my pieces lately. It's a really nice blue though. So there's that. This one has a thick bottom. It's very shiny. I'm just going to take a couple pictures of this one. And ah, okay. So yesterday I made a mistake. So I showed y'all this one, which is very similar, same color. This is one that I made all by myself, or mostly by myself. I think someone may have helped me turn this. Ah, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Um, so this is one that is one that I've made and done for myself. This is one that our lovely former technician, Ed Byrne, made while he was showing me how to make these. So you can see, same color. I love this color of blue. This, the shade of blue is so nice. Um, and I'm getting there. They're starting to be as nice. So I still have this one. Um, it is still sharp on the bottom. That's how I know which one it is. Anyway, I'm going to take a photo of that one and put this one back out of the way. I do like these just really simple forms with the color when, in the gradient. It, it's just there's something pleasing about colored glass when it's very simple. And one of the ways that I might be dealing with the fact that my project's not really going according to plan because of, you know, the world being as it is, is that I'm maybe doing installations at some point of just the patchwork panels with solid colored vessels as opposed to only the ones with the patterns in the bottoms of them like I was showing people yesterday. I do love this blue. It's so nice. And that one needs to find a place to sit out of the way so that I can get more glass out. Come over here for now. 
there are some things that I am packing away and there are some things that I'm just setting around my kitchen because I'm going to be taking photos of them with patchwork in a couple days once I have some patchwork to take pictures of them with. So next piece of glass. This one. And I am still very proud of this one. So this one, it's red. It's a really nice translucent red. You can see it's a similar shape to a lot of my other bottle pieces, um, except this one has been flattened. Not very well because I flattened it by myself and normally you do that in such a way that you don't end up with dips in the sides or chill marks or anything. Um, but I do like the flattened face shapes like this and I really like this color. Um, and you can see, I'll set this on the table and Put the blue one back out. You can kind of see my color palette evolving there. So these two were test pieces for the things like this that have, oh, I'm going to have to tilt the camera down a little, that have the patterns in the bottom of them. Bring this happy, nice family of glass. So nice. Anyway, I'm going to set that down for now. Get this out of the way. And take a few photos of this darling. I do like bottle forms. I especially like old perfume bottle forms and shapes that really are highlighting that curvature of the glass. There are a lot of artists out there in the glass world who push the material to its limits both physically and conceptually. And I do love their work, but it's not the kind of work I like doing. I like when I, I remind me when I am allowed, I'm seeing, uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing this right, Romadol's uh, comment. When I get to a point where I'm allowed to sell my work, uh, get in contact with me because some of these things will be looking for homes. Actually, a lot of these things will be looking for homes. I don't know if you can see it. Ah, so that right here, I really like this place where the glass is reflecting the color and it, it kind of has that sort of star sapphire thing going on. Just can't help but love this stuff. Set the camera over here and I'll just show this one to y'all one more time. Ah, nice. That's a long way away. Nice to meet you. So yeah, one more look at the bottle. You can see the kind of deformity on part of it here where it's rippled, but I do like how this piece turned out. And you can see my nice heavy bottoms on these. I love having that heavy clear bottom on things because it gives it more visual weight and also helps it be stable, especially when I'm pulling the pins up. My kitchen is full of glass to the point where I can barely do anything else right now until I get the glass sorted, which is why I'm doing all of this. Okay, so this one is the same shape, but it's brown. So I was color testing, but I was also playing with some pieces of mystery color, so some stuff that different people at the studios I've done work experience at had given me. Um, and this ended up being brown. It's a really nice kind of chocolatey gray shade. Um, you can really see the chill marks from where I was flattening it on there when the light hits it. But I do like the color, not necessarily for the project I'm doing right now, which is all primary patchwork colors. 
Um, but I do like it as a color, and I do want to play with it more in the future. And I do like the form this one has. I just need to uh, clean a little bit of Sharpie off of the bottom of this because I was preparing to grind and polish all of these, and then I had to bring all of my work home from the university because of, you know, closure due to viruses and all of that sort of lovely things. And I'm glad you like the colors and shapes on these. I, it's always nice to hear that people like the things that I'm doing. I know, big surprise there. But So I've just got a bottle of glass cleaner here um, so that I can wipe that layer of Sharpie off the bottom so it doesn't stain my fabric. Both because this fabric is uh, white and I need it to be clean so that I can, and because eventually this is probably gonna become part of my patchwork stuff. Although, if it gets really stuffed up, I'll just dye it some pretty color, because that's another component of the project I'm doing, is dyeing the fabric nice colors. There we go. Nice and clean. Or cleaner. It's still got a little bit of Sharpie down in the bottoms of it, but it's not too bad. So there's that one wipe the rest of the glass cleaner off of it. So, there's that. For those of you who don't know me personally and just clicked on this out of curiosity or who don't know very much about what's going on here, I am a final year student at the University for Creative Arts in Farnham in the UK, studying glass blowing mainly although I do other things as well. And these are pieces from my final year project and a few other things, but mainly my final year project that I'm working on here. So exciting things, I should be graduating soon and then I get to go out into the world and find a studio to work in as a professional glassblower, hopefully. I do like the color on this one. I am partial to brown. Thank you. Uh, I always will accept well wishes from people. So I am partial to brown glass uh, and grays and neutrals. Although again, for my final major project, I somehow decided I wanted to do bright primaries. So everything else has been much more colorful. This way now. So there's that one. And once again, just a nice shiny bottle form. And I'm just going to set that out of the way and get my next piece. So this one is heavy, so it must be one of my most recent pieces. And it is. So this is a clear version of the form that most of my final pieces are going to be taking. So it's got a really thick bottom, a really defined bubble, and a pulled up, slend somewhat slender, slightly flared neck. I know it's just clear glass, but I do love this form, and I've had to practice a lot the motions of using my tools to pull the necks out and get them just right. So go, getting to this point or to the point of being able to make something like this, which is also another form my final pieces are taking, has taken me quite a while. And I'm really sad I, I can't be in the studios right now practicing more um, just because I do enjoy these. I remember, right, this is the one that's a little bit off center as well. So I've 
need to grind it more once I can go back to the studio, but I do like the slight asymmetry in these. There we go. So I turn that a little. And now th this is um, what I'm talking about with my pieces. So one of the things I'm doing for my project is making fabric patchwork so that I can then set the glass pieces on it and have the pattern projected upwards into the bubble right here. So you can see where my hand is, it pulls the patterns up into it. And that is the effect that I'm trying to get when I make pieces like this. Same thing, but the pattern is inside the glass as opposed to underneath it. And that big, thick, clear layer helps to project it onto the bubble. Just have to get this lined up. Yeah, I think they would look very nice with single roses in them. Um, I like the idea that they could be potentially functional, but they're not, but they're also perfectly nice just by themselves. I'm just going to set this guy out of the way. Underneath my kitchen table is pretty much just solid glass at this point because I have so many things that I can't really pack away because I need to be able to take pictures of them again later with the patchwork. So they're just kind of sitting under the table. These crumbs off here. I don't know where all these crumbs are coming from. Okay, so next piece. I actually have several pieces that are wrapped together, so I have to be careful about giving up. So this is a piece that I made in preparation for making one of my other pieces last term, so in the fall. It's just a big yellow bowl. Um, I'm very proud of it, though, because you can see how nice and even the rim is. Uh, the color is put on a bit spotty, but I kind of like it. Um, so this was made as a practice piece move the camera out of the way again, for making this piece that I showed everyone yesterday. So I always, before I make something with my pattern tiles or that's going to be very intense work, I always make a few test pieces in either clear or a single color first so that I know what I'm doing and can get a nicer result. And I will show that again. So this is with the Log Cabin Marini from last term when I was first starting out my current project. Thank you. Oh, I like those little smiley faces. Thank you so much. Um, if you do want to continue seeing stuff from me, I do have this Facebook page, and if you like it, then as I'm doing things, uh, things get posted on there, so you'll be able to keep up with what I'm doing. And Hopefully, if we do end up having an online grad show for uh, those of us graduating this year instead of an in-person one, uh, you'll be able to see the link to see how my final work turns out, whatever it ends up being. So the color on this bowl is called Canary Yellow. It is um, kind of an orangish yellow. I do like it. The, the particular jar that I have of the color, let's see if I can show you, is contaminated with a little bit of a brown something, so it gets these little star spots in it, but I kind of, for my purposes, 
that actually is kind of nice sometimes. So yes, um, one more look at the nice yellow bowl before I have to find a place to put it. But yeah, I do like this bowl. It's a very nice bowl. I do, oh, and it's when I actually finish polishing. I'm just gonna take one more picture and then I will set this up the way. There we go. All right, now to find a place to set this so it is out of the way. I think I'm just gonna set it down in this box. I will move it later. And now for more glass. So this, I believe, is another bowl. Yeah, it is a very nice sunflowery kind of yellow. Um, I do have I'm not usually, gra I don't usually gravitate towards yellows, but I do have a kind of a small collection of different shades of yellow now um, that I've just acquired for different reasons. And I do like yellow glass when it's a good shade of yellow. It kind of, it's a really nice thing. So this is, I think, another bowl, because I did, I made three of them, two practice ones and then the final one. There's one piece of newspaper. this is the first bowl that I made. Oh, there's something else inside it. I will set that over here and come to it in a bit. So this was the clear one that I made. Um, there was some soot on the blowing iron when I made this one, so it ended up with a lot of bubbles. Um, but since it was a practice for making a bowl, because I hadn't really made many bowls up to that point, um, I still decided to keep it because the bubbles turned out nice. I like kind of that scattered bubble look to it, and it's got one big one here. Um, and as you can see, it's just a nice clear bowl, and it's the one that I made first, and then I made the yellow one, and then I made the other one. So yeah, I'm just going to take a picture of that. It does have really nice reflections in it. All right, so now I'm going to just try taking a picture of this on the patchwork real quick because it's one of my nice clear things. Ooh, that's cool. I have considered um, putting some patterns down in the bottom of bowl forms. I just have not had a chance to do it yet, but I think I might. I, I don't know how well it'll work with the more open form, but if I ever get to be in a studio again, I'm going to try. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it from the angle you're at. So I will show you what the picture I'm taking looks like. So as you can see, there's a bit of reflection up in the bottom of the bowl there. And that's, if I did one with a pattern in it, that's more what it would look like. So I might do some pieces like that someday. That's cool. So clear bowl, you can come sit over here with the yellow bowl. And now I can see what's in this, because I don't remember what I packed in each one of these when I was taking everything back from the university. Um, so this could be any number of things. Oh, yeah, I think I know what this is. It is? It's ah, it is. Okay. So my whole project right now is about taking block patchwork in fabric and translating that into glass. I did that a bit at the beginning of, of the school year, and I was doing that with putting the patchwork on the outside of, pa of pieces. And this is the first piece that I did that with. So it's a blown glass bubble that I roll up the sheet of patchwork onto the outside of. And this was the first one that really worked and that did something that I liked. So you can, um, the quilt pattern that this is, that these tiles are made to look like is called flying geese 
or geese, depending on who you talk to. For some people, flying goose is something different, but my mother calls this particular set of four half triangles geese. Um, and they actually look more like birds on this outside where the colors have moved and changed. Um, so as the glass is heated and made part of the bubble and then blown out, the glass moves. So the patterns move and they change and they distort. But then on the inside of this, I don't know, the patterns stay pretty much the same as they were when they were first pressed on the bubble. So that is the effect I was playing with for most of last year. Uh, let's see. Ah, there we go. If I angle the camera like this, you can really see the different patterns inside it. So this is the first one of the patchwork and glass pieces that I made that really worked in a way that made me think I did have something to that would work with this project and it was something worth pursuing and I really enjoy where it's going. And this also kind of looks like a little bit like a hand grenade or something, I don't know. It's got this weird armadillo-y texture. Just, it looks like a little creature um, with no head, but you know what I mean. And it's just a little bit flattened on the bottom. And it just, this piece of glass makes me so happy. I don't know how to explain it, partially because even though it's not what I intended it to do when I first made it, because originally there wasn't supposed to be a gap here, this was all supposed to roll up neatly. And it didn't, I didn't do the technique right, but it still ended up being a really good result. And of course you can see the patterns were really interesting on it. So I'm gonna take a few pictures of this. And of course it's that lovely blue. Just. You know the phrase, pictures don't do it justice? Pictures that I'm taking right now just don't really show this as nicely as I would like them to. Granted, that may have something to do with the fact that the sunlight is already disappearing and I'm not using the right sort of lens set up for this, but I don't have a fixed lens or a tripod or things to use like I would use on campus. Anyway. I absolutely love this piece of glass and the kind of little bird shapes that ended up happening because of the different colors that are in it. So yeah, this is what I love doing. I'm just going to set that down over here and get the next thing out. So I don't know if any of you were on watching the live stream yesterday, but I'm pretty sure this is a bird. Because anytime I am testing new colors of fritz or powders or anything like that, 
or I have a little bit of solid color left on the end of an iron after I'm making my pattern pieces or the patterns that go into the patterns that go into the patterns for the pattern pieces, I tend to make little glass birds with them. So I have quite a few little glass birds that I've made and I had not unwrapped all of them yesterday, although I have quite a few of them. And this is one of them. Okay, so this bird actually has a home it will be going to eventually. Um, I made this one for with another one that was a color test. It's blue-ish and brown and gray. Um, and my friend Sari uh, here, who's a master's film student, I had said I was making a bird for her. And this is the bird that I'm going to be giving her, but I haven't quite finished polishing its bottom yet. So it's kind of a, Sari, if you see this, your bird is here um, with me. And someday it will be polished and signed and I will give it to you. I promise. Um, but you can see there's a really nice swirl in this. Um, its bottom is still ground a bit, so it's not really transparent. But it's got a little bit of blue on its head. Um, strangely, this blue that I have is a powder that another student had given me, and it was labeled as chocolate. It's not brown, it's blue, but I like it all the same. And this is one of the nicest little birds that I've made this term. Just so nice. I love making these little birds. They just make me so happy to make and show people and to give to people. So yes, little bird. I need to set that out so I can send her a picture of her bird. Because she's met her bird. It's just I haven't had a chance to finish polishing it. nice little bird. All right, so I need to just take a picture of that with my phone as well because it's going to be a while before I can actually upload um, the pictures from my camera to my phone. So let's see. Just move the bird here and click. There we go. All right, and this little bird's gonna go sit with the rest of my little birds in my bird box, because I have a little box of birds. Because yesterday I unwrapped so many birds. Anyway, one last look at Sari's bird. Isn't he cute? And he's got a really nice little bubble on the inside of him. So the next thing I'm going to unwrap, it's another little bitty package, which means it's probably a bird. I am someday going to do an installation somewhere of nothing but tiny birds. Oh, and this bird is still sharp on the bottom because this is the last piece of glass that I made in the studio on campus before I had to stop because they were ladling out the furnace and we were only, we only we would only just have the next day to take our things home. So this one was uh, just hidden. I After I made him, he just got nestled into the bottom of the vermiculite bed where we'd crack things off so that he could cool safely and slowly because he's so small it wouldn't hurt him to do that. All of the other things that I made on Monday last week are still on campus in our annealing kilns um, or leers. Cool. They had cooled down completely by Wednesday morning, but I am was not allowed on campus on Wednesday, and I won't be for quite some time, so I don't know how those pieces turned out, but I do know how this little bird turned out. He's got a little bit of yellow solid color in him, a little bit of clear, and a little bit of blue, so he was what was left over when I was making one of my um, Marini sets. 
you can see a little bit of the blue there. And like most solid colored things, he is mostly solid color, so he is mostly black. He kind of looks like a duck. That's his, this is his tail. That's his beak. You can see he's got little eyes. I do like him. Um, his bottom is sharp, so I'm having to be kind of careful. But, yeah, so that is the smallest bird I have ever made. I do like making little bitty birds. But I think next time I, if I ever make these intentionally, I would definitely use Frit for them so you could see the color better. Well, I'm just going to take a couple pictures of the tiny bird. I'm almost to the bottom of the box. I'm so excited. I need to have the sunlight come through stronger so I can get a good shot of him. Um, but I live in England right now, and it is a very cloudy day, and it's getting later in the afternoon, so naturally the light's going away. So uh, once more, this is Bitty Bird, and I'm going to set him out of the way so I can get the next thing out. He needs to go in the box with the other birds. Tweet, tweet. And I know I still have birds left, so I think those are probably what the next couple of things I unwrap are going to be. More things to unwrap. They're all bird-sized packages. Um, eventually these birds will be looking for homes. They just can't right now because the visa that I'm on to be in the UK studying says that I cannot be self-employed, freelance, or own business interests. So in compliance with that, I am not selling my work until I am graduated and have all of my American business paperwork done so I can do taxes like an adult and responsible citizen. And then I'll be selling things. So eventually I will be saying, hey, I have birds. They need homes. Who wants to adopt one? So, But for right now, I'm just showing the birds because I love them so much. I just really enjoy making them. They're, they're really quick and easy, but at the same time, the tiniest little motion, and they have completely different expressions. Probably overdid it with the newspaper on this one. Yeah, there we go. I knew I was looking for this one. So this one, I have a feeling my mother is going to claim. It's a little red bird. It's got a nice little red swirl in it. This was from when I was working with some solid red glass for one of my pieces that I, or one of my component bars for my marini bars that will become the pattern tiles that go into my pieces. It's a lot. Um, so there was enough color and clear glass left on the iron to make a bird. I do gather over a little bit more clear on them. And he's just got the sweetest little face with his beak pointing up. He's got little eyes. I don't know how well they're coming across in the camera, but little red bird, little tail. He's got a really nice bubble inside him. I don't know if you can see it. Um, when I twist up the color, it does tend to get a nice little bubble in it. It's just a cute little bitty bird, kind of like a cardinal or a little red bird. Not quite a robin. Well, maybe an English robin. They are small. Things that I find interesting. English robins are about yay big. They would fit into this. And they are tiny little floofs of birds. And they hop around and they look at you and they say hi. And they're small and they're cute and they make a little high-pitched squeaky tweety sound. And somehow the big hulking pigeon-sized bird in the States that has similar coloration and is about that big got named a robin as well. And they look practically nothing alike except they both have red bellies. But American robins are big and are kind of dove sized in some places. They're, they're larger songbirds and English robins are little bitty things that are about maybe a third the size. And they're both lovely little birds. Of course, um, in our yard, 
in Memphis where my parents live, my mother has named all of the yards Robins. They are all named Bob. So the word for Robins in my mother's household is Bob's. So Bob, Bob Jr. is the little Robin that is still fledging, different things like that. I do love my mother and I do love hanging out with her and the, the cute little Robins do make us all laugh because they fight with her squirrels and all of that lovely stuff. But here I occasionally see a Robin when I'm out walking, when I'm allowed to be outside. Uh, anyway, back to this bird, which I know I'm babbling a little bit. I need to take a picture of this bird. Because I am going to keep doing the stream because I have to get this box empty today so I can finish cleaning my kitchen because tomorrow I need to be doing some patchwork. I am so excited for that. So tomorrow you will see a different part of my house because I will be sewing. Anyway, bird picture time. Now I'm just going to get some of my tea. And yes, my do not mess with Texas mug. World's best anti-littering campaign. And yes, I'm pretty sure this is another bird. Pardon the sneeze that I'm about to sneeze. Well, I was. Um, I do have a small allergy to dust, and because some of my newspaper and things are a little bit dusty, it's been making me sneeze a bit. So, no, I am not sick. Thank heaven I am not sick. I am perfectly healthy. I just have a sensitivity to dust, and I've been kicking up a lot as I've been cleaning and unwrapping things. So if you hear me sneeze or see me, um, don't worry. I'm fine. Really, it's just allergies. Anyway, bird. And this one, I don't know if she's on here watching, but um, my friend Morgan uh, was having a hard day at one point when I was going to be in the studio, and I told her I would make her a little bird, and I needed to test pink and yellow together, and she likes those colors. So, um, Morgan, your bird is pink and yellow, um, and has lots of cute little bubbles in it, and someday I will be giving this to you again once his bottom is polished, and I can sign him for you. Um, I had also made a big pink and yellow bird, um, but I do prefer the small ones. So actually, Morgan, if you're seeing this, I will give you a choice between the giant bird and the little bird, but I have a feeling you're gonna want this one with the cute little pink head. Just look at him, how cute he is. I like the little ones better because they kind of have the shape and hat, the little expressions of hummingbirds, if that makes any sense. So it's got a lot of nice little bubbles in him and just in general, a nice kind of dual swirl of pink and yellow. Just gonna get a couple photos of him. There we go. There's some nice photos of the little bird. And again, for the Instagram post, I need to post for making two of my friends happy. Picture of the little bird. Close that. And set the little bird in the box. So say goodbye to the little bird, everyone. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Yeah, I know it's kind of juvenile, but tweet.
would help if I got another piece of glass out of the box before I sat down. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I have struck bird. So, without further ado, Oh, okay, so this is probably my favorite bird I have made this term because, oh my goodness, it has ribbons. This is the first bird I've made where I've really gotten this ribbon effect to work this well. It's also, this is the size of a robin in this country, going back to what I was saying earlier. This is about the size of an English robin. Bird in the hand. Anyway, so this is made with the leftover glass that was on the end of the iron when I was making one of my Marini bars um, that had the primary colors in it. And since there was enough left on there, I decided, you know, this is a lot of color. I'm going to make a bird. So I twisted it up, and oh my goodness, just look at the swirls in this ribbon. It's like a marble with personality. And it just has the nicest shape of any bird that I've made with this particular set of techniques. Um, and yeah, if I ever do an installation of birds, this is the kind of color swirls that are going to be inside them, is this sort of ribbony, twisty thing. Um, but yeah, he also has a nice bubble down in his chest, and you can see through his bottom the marbly effect. Oh my goodness, I love this little bird so much. It's just... Part of why I do what I do is because it makes me happy. And I want to be doing work that makes me happy, and that I like to think makes other people happy. Um, I hope my little birds make you happy, because uh, eventually I'm going to be making these and sending them out into the world to make people's days better. Because there, there's just something nice about a piece of glass that you can sit and look at and just see all the different colors in it. It's kind of like when I was a kid, I did have a, my brother and I together did have a huge box of marbles that we kept, that we played with, but mainly I picked out pretty ones here and there. So I went from collecting marbles and all sorts of other little things to making marbles that are actually, that turned into birds. But anyway, I need to take a few pictures of this guy. Oh my goodness, I forgot how pretty this was. Uh, here's a fun activity for being stuck in your house. Pick things around your house wrap that you like um that you but that you don't use very often wrap them up in newspaper put them in a box hide them from yourself for a couple of weeks then when you take them out of the box you get all the excitement of seeing the things that you forgot you had and unwrapping things and just unwrapping stuff is fun i can see why unboxing channels why on youtube and stuff i can see part of the reason why people may do it because it is fun Unwrapping things, seeing what's inside a little package. I, I know when I do eventually start selling my work, I am going to wrap it in such a way that it is fun to unwrap. Now, of course, I do not really shred paper, but I know my cats love it when uh, my mother's unwrapping Christmas presents and stuff because we all tear the paper off and roll it up into balls and throw it across the room for them. And they chase it, and it is the best thing ever. Other way of entertaining yourself, throw balls of newspaper for a cat. If you've got a cat. Dogs might do it too. I'm not really that familiar with dogs, but anyway, I need to take pictures of this bird. I am distracting myself, but I hope it is a pleasing distraction for you as well if you're watching. So for those of you who've been watching me unwrap birds for a while, I'm going to put up a poll on Facebook later today, somehow, um, that will be a picture of one of my birds that has little eyes poked in it and a picture of one that doesn't. Because I really can't decide whether I like them better with eyes or like this one where it's just kind of the gesture of a bird and doesn't really have eyes. Or not eyes poked in, it's more of a bird-like thing. 
Let me know your opinions on this. I like hearing people's opinions of my work. I really do. Don't say anything explicitly horrible in me, of course. Be, be constructive. But I, I, you know, be nice to people. But do tell me if there's something you think I need to improve on or that you think is cool and that I should do more with. Because I always do want feedback on these things. And I don't get very much exposure right now to people who can tell me what they think of stuff. So... Trying to get some good photos of the ribbons on the inside of this bird. So yeah, one more look at the beautiful ribbony Robin um, and his lovely bubbles and his lovely streamers. I cannot express how proud I am of this little bird. This is probably the nicest bird I've ever made. Or at least I think it is. It does have a few tool marks on it here and there, but I do like this bird. It's cute. And it's just the right size for holding in your hand. Like a robin. If they would sit in your hand, which usually they don't want to. So, what else is in my box? Ah. I can guarantee this is not a bird. I think. It doesn't have the right proportions to be a bird. Um, ah, yeah. So this is a test piece I made. It's clear. It's huge. Um, sorry that I was talking about earlier. Uh, used this as a background piece in a film she was making, actually. Because, you know, it worked at the time. Uh, so this is one of the, at the time, at the beginning of fall last year, this was one of the biggest pieces of glass I had ever blown myself and done, outside of some collaborative pieces that I'd done that were not finished at the tops and things. Um, they were ground and different stuff like that. But uh, this one, it's big, it's heavy. I'm planning eventually to actually use this for some dye, fabric dye experiments where I'll put the dye in the bottom and then have the fabric down inside it to actually take pictures as the fabric is being dyed and has the colors traveling up it. So that's part of the reason for these. It also makes a very nice vase, uh, vase, however you want to say it. I've gotten to the point, having lived here for the last three years and worked in a glass blowing studio for the last six or seven months, that I don't always know whether I'm saying vase or vase because they're interchangeable sounds in my brain now. The joys of living in other places. Anyway, I'm going to take a few pictures of this. And then I'm going to take a picture of it with this underneath. See, the reason I was making the cylinders is because originally I was going to do the patterns on the outside of them like this, except this would be glass. Um, and I did do that for some of my pieces, but where they were, I was originally going to do them where they were fully wrapped up, just the pattern as a glass piece. My projects evolved away from that, but I do still like the idea. So, anyway. It's still one of the taller things that I've blown by myself. Um, if I put, this is one of, this is still about the height. This one, the ones I'm making now are actually bigger than this. And at the time, this was a struggle. And now I'm at the point where I'm making these. Granted with these, I have had help because I can't always reach while I'm pulling these. Anyway, this is one of my semi-final pieces. I'm still very proud of it. It has a nice bubble and reflections and patterns in it. Those of you who were here yesterday saw it, but I'm going to put it away from now because I'm just trying to get through the rest of this box so that tomorrow I can live stream doing something else. And also because I need to download these photos and start editing them and putting them on my website so I can actually put my web website live and 
start showing you all pictures of everything that I'm doing it because I'm really excited about the work that I do and I want to share it with people because that's my whole purpose of existing is making people's days brighter with nice things or with positive talking or just in general with positivity and beauty and creativity. Yes, this is one of my university shirts. It says it has the university's logo on the back. One of them not really turning around enough, but Anyway, pictures. I keep getting distracted today. I think cabin fever may be setting in just a little bit. Let's see how this looks with the powder in it. So, I have to get down low to do this. Not putting my knees on the ground now. I learned my lesson earlier. I'm gonna have to take some pictures of this one when I get my big patchwork set up to take pictures with. But that's not gonna be for a few days because I need to do something other than taking photos for a while after today. Okay, what's next? There's not very many pieces left in my box. I'm so excited. All right, so y'all know the drill now. Small newspaper wrapped packages. It's probably a pair of birds. <laughs> yeah, it's a bird. Why am I excited that it's a bird? So this is a little yellow bird. Oh, where's the camera? There's the camera. So there's my little yellow, a little yellow bird. This one is, I believe, curry yellow. Um, and he's got a cute little pointy beak and a cute little tail. It's very streamlined, this one. And he's got kind of a vortex of color inside him. Which is so much fun to do. And he's actually kind of polished. So this is why I was originally making these, was as test pieces for swirled patterns that I would then slice crosswise and lay out to make tiles, which I still may do in the future. So these were my, these birds that are yellow were my tests for that. But then I didn't end up going that direction with my project. So I just have a lot of cute little birds like this guy. And he's cute. There we go. Every time I get something different out, I have to change the settings on my camera just slightly. There we go, that's a good one. All right, so I'm gonna put this little bird just out of the way here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and unwrap this little bird, because this has to be a bird. I mean, I don't remember if I have anything else that would be this size that's wrapped up that I haven't already unwrapped and put somewhere. So this one is a transparent yellow and it's not exactly as nice as some of my other birds. Its tail kind of went wonky, but I still think he's cute. He's got kind of a rosebud down inside him. And yeah, so there's that bird. 
Just, again, a little bit of a derpy bird, but I do like him because he's cute. And you can really see that translucent yellow in there. And this kind of swirl, when it's small, does look a lot like a rosebud. It's going to have to change angles so that I can take a picture of it. There we go. I wonder what he would look like on this. Mm, nope, does not work. All right, so I'm going to put those two little birds away and get another piece of glass out that hopefully will not be a bird. Probably another cylinder. I did make several back when I thought I was going to be making patterned cylinders for my project, and then somehow I didn't end up doing that at all. Stuff happens. Ah, but this one is red, and oh my goodness, I love this shade of red. I'm not much of a red person in general when it comes to things, but I love red glass. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom and my grandmother both had red glass in their houses that they semi-collected and it always kind of stuck with me that if I wanted to have glass in my house for dishes or cups or things I wanted the colored stuff and I really love that red glass and this is pretty much that same shade it's um just got this nice dark down at the bottom thinner at the top and again for some of the first larger scale cylinders I was making, I was so pleased with how these came out. And I do want to do more cylinder forms at some point, especially um, possibly with some patterns on them. But yeah, so this also has a nice thick bottom as well. You can also see it's still sharp at the bottom because this is one of the pieces from last term that I have not yet cold worked. Anyway, I'm gonna take a few pictures of that. You can't really see it, but there's this nice red reflection down in here. It's just so pretty. It also leans to one side, which is something I would actually have to go in and correct when I cold work it. Um, for comparison, for those of you who saw this yesterday, this is the same color in a different shape. I just love this color so much. And I like collections of similarly colored objects expressing different ways the light hits them. Glass is just so much fun. So, I'm going to put this out of the way. We're getting close to the end of the box, guys. Really, we are. Another clear cylinder, I think. Ah, yeah, it is. it's even bigger. Um, this one was actually a closed top bubble that was then cut for me. So I was still in the process of grinding the rim, which is why there's black sharpie all over it, which I need to clean off and to clean off the bottom so I can take pictures. Again, if anybody who's watching has questions about the stuff that I do or about glass blowing in general or just anything really, um, I am perfectly happy to answer questions or to talk about whatever you'd like me to try talking about. Um, just let me know. Comments, messages, whatever. If I don't answer it today, I may answer tomorrow while I am doing patchwork. I'm so excited. I'm going to get to do some patchwork tomorrow.
There we go, nice and clean. Still has a big black mark on the bottom, but I can't really do much about that because um, I don't have the right sort of solvent to take all of the Sharpie off and it's down in the texture of it, but it should work for my purpose of just documenting. <laughs>